uh, what do you think about the scientific models people use nowadays? Are they new? Could citizen science or science activities that involve family could cope with this uh, scientific misunderstanding in a strategic level? So about the, the quality, uh, again, of, of the data, of the work we, uh, we can uh, obtain from citizens. Who would like to intervene on, on this and re reply, please? Okay. Uh, I think in some ways there are different models, but uh, the point is, for example, in the context of process, those uh, works that we did along the process, developing drafts and uh, readjusting drafts and readjusting negotiation is quite different from the instrumental one that is usually used in scientific art uh, uh, sciences. So what I mean is there are different ways of validation and these new models are in need of new ways of monitoring and evaluating and also validating. The validation, for example, of what was co-produced by the forums was done thinking that knowledge at the end will be more correct and perfect by merging all the knowledge that were coming together. So it's quite different than what we do in the settings of art science and instrumental models. Thank you, thank you, Leah. Any other replies on this, on this point? Okay. If there is a other other uh, other questions I, I must uh, yes, yeah, so uh, Mario Joao sorry, sorry. had a very interesting question. I don't know if Mario Joao would you like to uh, pose uh, directly uh, the question I think is was very relevant. I don't know it's to think if uh, uh, that uh, group is uh, an opportunity also to discuss models, new models to approach citizens uh, from science and science from citizens not having as an objective uh, a better citizenship or a better science but a new world you know a new utopia because i think we we lack utopias now and uh, we are not prepared to things like the covid we are submerging to the media um, diagnostics because we lack some utopia. I'm thinking about uh, people like Fourier, Charles Fourier or uh, uh, David Toro, you know, uh, people that uh, think out of the box. And I was uh, following very much what Shane was telling because uh, this is an opportunity also to reform science and citizenship. My question was in that sense. And I think that the university has the res responsibility to invent new models, to approach new people, you know. So I think we are, we cannot, uh, we cannot uh, be imprisoned in the box. We have the res responsibility to be out of the box and to invest in new models. And uh, the COVID situation is already an experimentation <laughs> with uh, uh, societal e experimentation. And I think the university must address that with another kind of radicalism, I think. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, Jose, would you like to pick up one of the questions that... I think there is a very interesting question here from Philippe Delvos from the University of Luxembourg. And uh, this is related with the quality of data, the checking of quality of data. And maybe on the other ways also, I will join a, another question is about the ethics uh, of utilization, the data collected by the citizens. And so the question is, can anyone share uh, the experience with data qual quality check methodology when valorizing data collect jointly with citizens? And he makes a very acute point is that uh, we currently observe difficulties in to trust meta-analysis and big data on the context of COVID-19. So I think this is a very important point, how we, how we check the quality of the data that it, and also um, if we trust the data that is collected. May I go ahead with, with an answer? Uh, I, I 
I think that is that is a critical point. I'm not going to talk about uh, COVID-19, but I use the air quality example because in in fact, uh, quality is, is crucial. And in this case, we're talking about health impact uh, of the numbers collected by the different sensors, for instance. So that's where I think the university plays a role. Um, while, you know, uh, there are statistical tests, there is, um, it's, it's impossible to assure that all the data is reliable, but it doesn't make sense to throw away all the data that we are collecting because uncertainty is part of this uh, uh, collection uh, method. So we do have uh, to have methodologies and uh, we have them to, to actually evaluate what can be uh, considered as uh, data uh, with a minimum amount of quality to be incorporated and to be used. And on the ethical side, that is a crucial um, point. Uh, I think that uh, it's, it's, it's a gift from uh, any citizen uh, to actually provide the data to, to uh, uh, the scientists, to the community, but to the university in particular, to, to publish papers on uh, using their data, but all those citizens should be acknowledged by uh, the, the, the effort they made. Okay, maybe Luciano, if you let me just ask a, 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 another question to Francisco Ferreira. Yes, uh, since you present a huge amount of data to analyze, uh, do, you, do you, in Portugal, school, there are a lot of schools participating in the project. Also, in your opinion, um, uh, the question is also, as you present, it's a huge amount of data to analyze in your opinion. Can citizens really help on this? Yeah, definitely citizens can help on, on the schools. There were some projects with, uh, with schools, not with these type of sensors. Uh, there are some proposals, but as far as I know, with, with, uh, with passive samplers, which are different. They don't give us... Uh, they don't give us real-time data, they, they give us uh, uh, average data afterwards, after the analysis. Uh, so there are some numbers in Portugal, but the point is that these real-time sensors that I showed you are much uh, uh, cheaper. And, and indeed, I'm, I'm convinced that uh, with um, not much uh, amount of money, it would be possible for the schools to get engaged in this type of, uh, of uh, projects uh, very soon. If, if there are not already schools uh, uh, doing this uh, participation uh, in Portugal. And of course, uh, the map I showed was Malta, but I know that there are many other projects in other European countries with a little bit of financing. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Francisco. And then we have a very active uh, PhD students online from the University of Lisbon, uh, Teresa Neves. Uh, she asked more than one question. We start with one. Uh, we hope to have time to uh, put all of them uh, to the panelists. This is, this is for Katarzyna. Uh, Katarzyna, in all the projects that you presented, do you have some data about the benefits to the participants? Science literacy, skills development? Um, well, uh, Thank you, Teresa, for your um, question. It's uh, very interesting. And unfortunately, <laughs> I don't really have much, um, much data uh, um, on that. So um, I think definitely uh, the thing that I mentioned that um, these projects are initiated by the people who have this scientific literacy, as you um, very nicely um, name it, um, and uh, therefore there is a bar there is an entry barrier um, for the citizens to enter into this um, um, into these projects and um, into citizen science, and. Um, uh, I think that maybe I will, uh, by addressing your question, I will also maybe refer to Zhao Mario's question. Um, um, and also by the latest question uh, asked by uh, Juliana and I, uh, about 
mixing these two worlds. I think these, these different worlds, because there are multiple worlds, not only citizens and scientists, um, speaking from my personal experience and from the experience of people who practice citizen science, I think the most important thing is interaction. Um, I have been a part, a, a member of these um, cross-sectoral research groups um, and doing participatory research, do, doing uh, more um, action research, uh, so more applied uh, oriented or even let's say critical or normative research. Um, and it's definitely very challenging. Uh, however, I think uh, people, first of all, might have different um, identities. Uh, I sometimes identify myself as a researcher. There are situations where I identify myself as a citizen and I don't have a problem merging these uh, multiple identities. Um, we live in a world of multiple identities and it's good to acknowledge that um, when we talk about this issue. Um, another thing I, I think uh, which is very crucial is that with Shane um, um, underlined are, are the values. I think if we are able to um, find common values, we are able to also learn from one another and also give each other both understanding of social problems of, or understanding of the problem uh, and then um, um, giving ourselves some skills. Um, uh, I know that very often I'm the one who is more into the methodology, so uh, keeping the quality of, of the research. Uh, other people are more enthusiastic and they are more um, um, they are better at targeting decision makers. I'm not really good at that. But uh, if we combine our resources and our skills, we are uh, overall more successful in what we are doing. Mm, and um, that's also coming back um, um, to, the, to the first presentation, that I think it's important that there, um, there is a good organization um, of this whole um, um, citizen research process, because I might not be grasping the whole process by itself, but I need to know where my involvement is crucial to both uh, assure the, the quality, uh, and I know I should know at which um, stage I need other people uh, in the research, and they should know that as well. And I think the biggest challenge is. Um, coordinating that. And for that, um, also shout out to Shane, we need good and confident leaders. And whenever uh, I have this experience with a good and confident leader that is able to listen to everyone and make the most of their skills, I think then we're um, being successful. Thank you, Katarzyna. Maria Fernanda, you wanted yeah. to intervene, yes. Yes, uh, to have something uh, um, about what uh, João Mario said and uh, some questions. I think that we have some projects very interesting uh, involving schools and higher education also uh, at um, higher education level. So we must have some kind of recognition, uh, not only from schools, but also from uh, uh, universities are very important at this level. Uh, some projects, and we have some of them in our Portuguese universities, recognize as a, 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 um, a discipline or a, a, the credits related to these kind of projects. So, and they are, and we are allowed to 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 promote some uh, uh, research projects and uh, student projects that consider this kind of uh, collaboration between students, schools and researchers. So, but we need, of course, that this kind of recognitions from universities uh, be important and, uh, and that this kind of openness uh, that is essential to, to transform and to, to, to change the way of learning. And we need it uh, in the, the point of view of the researchers, the professor, but also the connection with schools. We invite every year about 300, 400 students from secondary schools to work with us in scientific projects. 
and the, the, the program uh, that I presented you, the Memory for All, uh, the project of collecting data, verifying data, and try to put it in a preserved way and curatorship in digital ways also, are done with not only schools, but our uh, uh, students at higher education level, but also with people uh, uh, from society. We have uh, uh, groups about seniors and uh, residents that collaborate uh, in collecting data, but also in this process of uh, uh, trying to uh, verify this kind of data. But I think that for this kind of uh, scientific uh, and academic recognition, we must uh, not only to open to that, but to help people uh, and try to, to, to develop tools uh, for training and for uh, considering this kind of, uh, of problems. With consequences, very important, very important, and we can see that in the, the funding of European projects nowadays, in evaluating science in its relationship with citizenship and other kinds of uh, projects. So, but universities are central in this kind of uh, processes, of course. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maria Fernanda. Uh, I don't know, Jose, if you have a, um, any question. I, I thought that the question from Juliana Leite could be maybe relevant also for Veronica. I don't know, Veronica, if you see this, uh, this question, if you want to comment on the, is the number seven in one of the last emails. Mm -hmm. uh, do you believe uh, that the transformation in uh, participation and appropriation of scientific knowledge for and by society is related to the change in the form of training in, in universities for more transdisciplinary means and with a greater relationship between courses to see and treat uh, complex problems. If there is yeah. any, any, any comment maybe that you would like to mm -hmm. make. I, first of all, I just wanted to briefly add something to the school and how yes. to address school uh, question. Yes. Uh, in, in Austria, we had a funding program that was launched by the uh, Ministry of Science, and I think it was going on for nine or ten years. It was called Sparkling Science, and it was explicitly for um, universities and other, other research institutions who want to actively involve school pupils into their research projects. And they had to be actively involved, not just, you know, interviewing them or so. And that was very interesting. There were all kinds of disciplines um, that uh, took part in that program and a lot of very interesting research um, was going on in, in, in all disciplines. Unfortunately, the program um, has stopped uh, by now. Uh, but my experience was that a lot of teachers and also you know, directors of schools were very happy because it was good for their reputation to cooperate with the university. Um, uh, it was not so, um, you know, for us researchers, it, it, it was more, more work to transform this into publications. Um, but um, it was very, um, and that also connects probably to the, to the question about methods and methodologies. As a social scientist, for me, it meant to totally rethink our methods. Because when you invite um, pupils, especially those that are not, you know, going to high school and planning to go to university, but those that have learning difficulties, if you want to involve these uh, pupils in your research, actively involve them in the research, then you totally have to change methods, you know, reading a long time, writing texts, uh, listening, sitting together for hours, all these things do not work. Yeah? We had to change to listening, drawing sketches, uh, performing things, you know, doing all kinds of, um, invent all kinds of uh, methods actually. Um, to, to change uh, our, our research and do research with these young people. Nevertheless, it was incredibly interesting. And, and we, we saw a lot of things that you usually would not see when you do just you know, narrative interviews and want to, to let them um, tell you your life story. Then you would have a few sentences and that's the end of the interview then. But when they start doing their own research and, and do research on what is their own interest, not ours as researchers, you know, then, then there is a lot of things going on. So that was very interesting, but we had really had to rethink what does sociology mean here. Uh, Luciana, before I pass you the word to close up the meeting, uh, I, I would like uh, just to share with everybody that has been listening uh, how pleased I think you and my, myself and you, we are with the way, way the webinar went. 
uh, was a, a wide range of topics and very complementary and uh, so I was, I was really impressive. But uh, th there is an open question from Francisco. He left an open question, probably cannot answer to that. But uh, he asks if someone has data of, of uh, any numbers or even estimation of the percentage of people per country involved in citizenship, in citizen science, direct or indirect activities. So if people have numbers about that, it would be interesting if we can share those numbers. And the other question is, how important is the role of mobile phones in citizen <laughs> science? Uh, so it's also maybe this is a whole project probably on, on this top of, of uh, applications to use on citizen science. And uh, for my part, I thank you very much. It was a very pleasant hours we spent here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jose, because you are the promoter of this initiative. Uh, this idea was yours and I think it was very successful. Any other intervention from the panelists? Uh, if you want to, please, uh, Shane. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of taken by Joao uh, Mario's comment about these ideas of fixed identities. Um, I, 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 I'm going to reflect a lot on his comments about the uh, breaking of the, the box in the universities. I, uh, you know, I, I, th I think we need to be bolder than to respond to what, you know, what is given to us and instead for us to lead. Um, thank you, Joao, most interesting. Thank you. Other uh, final comments from the Pine Maria Fernanda? Or yeah, Maria? Just a contribution. There are several associations, international and national, with uh, some figures that may answer and help uh, the, the answer that was uh, um, the question. Uh, and if you want some figures, if you want to send me an email, I can help you, of course. Yeah. I would like to say something. Uh, I think the role of the researcher is really to mobilize the knowledge that is uh, around in society disseminated and empower the citizens so that we can have the different types of knowledge and citizen knowledge on the processes. This is through usually collaborative process of co-construction. Okay, I think we have to uh, close now. It's uh, a little bit late. I also want to thank Lidio Costa because he sent a very interesting uh, link. Uh, I encourage everyone to look at that link. I think it's a good practice that we can also uh, share with everyone. And uh, again, I would like to thank very much all the panelists. It was a very interesting uh, webinar. Uh, thank you very much to Jose uh, Moura and to Joao Mario Grillo, to the University Nova de Lisboa, who played a very important role in this webinar. I would like to thank all the participants. Uh, we reached a peak, I think, of over 90 people online. Uh, the registrations were more than 150. So I think it's, uh, it's a also very good uh, participation. Also, I remind you, as uh, Vicky said in the beginning, please also uh, reply to the survey that we will send. Uh, you know, we want to also check the quality of our events. So please respond to the survey to, to make sure that we um, you know, know and also try to improve. We have to say that webinars are also in for us. So we are learning by doing it's something that in Unica we were not doing before COVID. So COVID is a big tragedy, but. Uh, in terms of uh, UNICA and other universities, we are trying to react in the best way and use also the opportunities that this uh, new uh, digital era is offering us. I also would like to thank very much the office, uh, Vicky and uh, Laura Colò and uh, Laura Brosico. We have two Lauras, so we have to add the last name as well, uh, for all the work uh, in uh, preparation. And also I would like to remind you, uh, it was sent uh, now in the chat, Please have a look at the UNICA calendar. There are many interesting uh, events uh, coming up. Uh, we, we are organizing uh, uh, several uh, webinars, more than one per month. And there is one also, uh, maybe I can mention in October, on uh, interdisciplinary and uh, transdisciplinary research in collaboration with the network CESAR. I think that is, can be very interesting for some of the people online uh, today. So uh, thank you very much to all uh, and uh, see you soon uh, in another <coughs> unique event. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.